Hello, I'm David DeCosmo. Welcome to ECTV Live. I'm joined by Rusty Fender, my co-host. Hey, good to see you, Dave. Good to see you. Rusty, April, uh, we always make sure we observe the distracted driving month And there in are April. so many distractions in this day and age. Absolutely. And Eileen Miller is uh, uh, really a crusader with uh, the idea of fighting distracted driving and, and Eileen I know we we talk about it all the time but I mean it's, it's why it's why you do it um, the loss the tragic loss of your son if you would recount it for us please Hi, Eileen. Uh, hello how are you <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know how many times I've been on here we've been uh, really doing this but yes yeah. um, April is distracted driving awareness month but to me every day is distracted driving awareness uh, day um, uh, 2010, July 5th, my son was tragically killed down on Route 33, um, and my life has been changed forever, and I've been um, pushing for legislation, and I'm awareness naturally, but uh, on um, July 4th, my son Paul Jr., um, which you see here, uh, uh, went to visit friends on the 4th of July. Uh, Actually, 4th of July, he worked. He, my son was in the criminal justice program here at Lackawanna College. Yes, okay. uh, did two years there. Uh, two years then at East Stroudsburg, which brought him to that day. He was going to visit friends. Um, 3 o'clock, he walked in the door from Garrity's, which was a part-time job that he had there. Said, Mom, I'm going to go visit friends on the 4th of July and uh, give me a kiss and a hug, and not knowing that that would ever be the last kiss or hug that I would ever get from him. So he did everything right. He went to a party at ESU when he went to visit friends and um, like I said my son did everything right he stayed overnight he um, had two beers but that wasn't why he stayed he was tired and wound up he was not in ESU he wound up being all the way down in Bethlehem so uh, he was out of his environment didn't know where he was and um, I didn't know until after he had passed that he had called me to tell me he was going to stay. I missed that call, unfortunately. I didn't know that till after he had passed. He had called me again at 10 o'clock. Um, I again missed that call. I was in the shower. But he had called other friends and said, hey, call my mom. Tell her I'm not going to um, come home. I'm going to stay. I'm further than I thought. I'm tired. Um, I'm going to drive home in the morning. At 7.20, um, he had called his boss, Mark, at Garrity's and called him, again, being responsible and said, you know, I stayed overnight. I was tired. I didn't know my destination. I'm on my way home now. And uh, his boss said, Paul, go home. Take a shower. It's July 5th. You know, we're slow here. When you get here, you get here. So Garrity's wasn't waiting for him. Uh. They weren't expecting him because they told him, take your time. So at that point at my house, I was having a party. So I was getting ready and prepped. And some of the girls had called me and said, you know, we want to go swimming. We don't want the guys to see us in our bathing suits. Could we come a little earlier? So I'm sitting on the porch in a rocking chair, you know, waiting for my friends to come at noon. And quarter to 12, two state troopers pulled up back to back, you know, right out of a a, a horror movie scene, your heart sinks. And I immediately knew something was wrong. So they started to ask the questions, you know, um, you know, uh, is this 1407 Fig Street? And I said, yes. Is your husband here? And I said, yes. And, you know, I instantly kept saying, it's my son, it's my son. But they wanted to kind of, you know, could we go in the house and talk? But what they had done is they had pulled up the registration of the car, which was my husband's. Uh. And they saw his picture and they were like, this isn't a balding man, you know. And then they pulled up my son's and they thought, could be possibility, but what we did not know at the time is they had called the Dunmore police. This had happened down in Monroe County. Mm -hmm. So they called the local state troopers. And then what they didn't tell us also at the time is they did not know that at the time my son's body was dragged out down the highway. Mm -hmm. So what had happened is as my son was coming north, the tractor trailer was seen from 80 onto Route 33 you know, speeding, lane switching, going back and forth, witnesses had witnesses for a while. He had been going south and then um, he tried to overcorrect, go up against the guardrail, he jackknife, came across the two lanes of highway, a grassy medium, hit my son head on, pushed him back into an embankment and then following behind my son was a van full of 12 people. That, that van had then hit the tractor trailer. 
So three of them were life lighted. All of them were taken to local hospitals. I'd forgotten that element of it, that others were, were injured. Yes, and, and yes. And the uh, photograph uh, on our table here is uh, uh, the result of that collision. Uh, Boy, do I remember that morning because I had it on, on all the stations I was on doing traffic, KRZ and Froggy 101 and WILK and Easy 103 in the mountain. And right. very rarely do you get a call from the state police that says the highway is shut down. Usually if it's an accident, it's one lane, right. traffic is backed up. This was yeah, 33 down. shut down, yeah. both lanes, both directions. directions. It sticks in my mind like yes. it was yesterday, not knowing that our paths would cross right. years later, yeah. 2010. And I, I, you know, they were going back and forth because they weren't 100%, they just kept saying, would anybody else be driving that vehicle? You know, and I had expected him to come home, but, you know, hence I didn't find out until afterwards when I checked, you know, um, actually the phone that he had called me and I had missed those calls, but he was always so responsible. Mm -hmm. So wound Pretty up, obvious from right, the calls, and, and yeah. I wanted to go view him and they kept telling me, no, he's a criminal case, you can't view him, but I told them I'm coming down, no, regardless. So I did unfortunately go down, you know, I did go into the morgue and, I, you know, I told the coroner, um, I had to unzip the body bag to view him because he was that bad, I couldn't, he was, you know, just in the body bag with his head exposed, and he was that bad that I could not identify him. Um, and I had to unzip the body bag, and I had to actually look at the clothes from when oh I kissed him gosh. at 3 o'clock wow. to I identify him. He wow. was that bad, you know, and I, um, you know, she kept telling me I couldn't touch him, you know, that he was a criminal case. And, you know, I, I just at that point had whispered in his ear that I would fight to find out what happened to him and I would fight for change and nobody should ever have to th view your child like that. No. No, mm -hmm. there was just nothing that I could have done Boy, for him. Well, you certainly have fulfilled that vow though. Uh, and and right. of course, your, yes. your looking into this um, revealed right. that it was distracted driving yes. on the truck driver's part Right. Uh, and, and, and how did you determine that? Uh, well, it was kind of his statements. The DA's office in Monroe was never really going to do anything about it. They kept telling me they didn't want to hear the sun was in his eyes. They were telling me they didn't want to hear he was tired. It was actually his own statements um, that had said that. But I did meet with him um, after he got out of prison. I had a fantastic judge. Thank you to um, Judge Stephen Higgins, who was in Monroe County. Um, he did say he took his eyes off the road, and I did um, meet with him, and he, he had confessed to me, you know, that he was distracted and that he was sorry after he went to prison, um, and he, he did do 17 months um, in There's prison. There's a little bit of closure there anyway. Um, I, you know, I met with him, and I told him I forgave him. Um, I can't deal with hate. There's too much hate in the world, and yeah, there's too much yeah. bad. And his in, the intent is is that he did not, you know, from the DA's point of view and all that, it was not intent. He didn't mean to do it that day. But, you know, everybody's on their phones every day. Nobody intends to kill, but yet thousands of people are killed and injured every day. Well, he, due well, to well, he, he paid the price, too, with the prison time, and you lose right. your CDL at that point forever. So you know. um, I think your mind is, uh, there's always a prison there in that kind of case. Um, I know now that him. I've met with him after, um, from the time that I saw pictures of him on the side of the road to when we started meeting, and he took our case all the way to the Supreme Court, kept, you know, appealing, appealing it and appealing it, yeah. which, you know, you know now that my husband, um, a year later, started tripping and falling and walking in the walls, and almost two years to the day he was diagnosed with ALS, yeah, which yeah. is a terminal um, disease. Lou Gehrig's disease. Gehrig's, and yeah. he's in a wheelchair, he's losing his voice, you know, oh, and... Um, You're a tough lady. So, <laughs> and we, we advocate, sure. next month is ALS Awareness Month, so we advocate in Harrisburg and Washington for both, and um, Representative Rosemary Brown, we just reintroduced the bill again. Last year, we got, I got to speak before the Transportation Committee. We got it to go to caucus. We almost got it through, but we didn't have enough time. So, um, Representative Rosemary Brown just reintroduced the bill. Um, it's in transportation now, and I'm coming out fighting again. Um, <laughs> I can't tell you how many years that it's been, but this is the first time we got it through transportation last time, so she reintroduced it now, so um, here I am again. And, and what does this particular bill It's the handheld bill. Um, you, all novice drivers can't use handheld or Bluetooth. Um, if you get pulled over, um, you know, this is a good enforceable bill. The police will be able to, it has to be mounted. Um, so, and also there's a $200 fine it will be, um, that you'll get, and um, 
the 175 will go to a, an educational distracted driving awareness program. Okay. So it's a good, we're still doing the education, you know, like I do, I go out to all the schools and I speak and already, I'm already booked, you know, it's yeah. prom time yeah. is coming up, so I tell them. And I want everybody to be very clear, hands-free is not risk-free. In your brain, you are still distracted. You know, I still tell everybody, you know, the best thing for me, see this button right there, the off button, mm -hmm. that's the best thing to do. Completely turn it off because every time you hear that ping, you know, you get a squirt of dopamine off your brain, you want to keep reaching for it, you still yeah. hear it. it and depending on your situation that given day, something might be pending right. where, it's oh my a, gosh, I have important. to check that. That's right. 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 Uh, so that so the off because right. uh, when you turn it back on, you're going to see messages right. anyway. Right. You're right. not going to really lose. And you you in the back of your brain constantly keep thinking, what was that? What is it? I need to hear it. You know, pull over. I have a very very sick husband right now, and when I'm on the road, I'm always worried about him. But I never have that phone on in my car at all. It is completely off. And when I get to my destination, the first thing that I do is turn that phone on and I'll call them and say, are you okay? Do you need anything? You know, what's the story? There's nothing more, no phone call, no text, no selfie, no email, no nothing that is worth the life. How's PennDOT been through all this? Um, PennDOT has been great with yeah, me. Yeah, because Leslie I mean, Richards, who is the Secretary of Transportation, is a good friend of mine. And yes. They're really into all this, you know, not only for public awareness, but, you know, yes. let's face it, media relations, community yes. relations they're, is a real big part of it. So they're they they're one really, of my safety partners. Good. They've Excellent. been great. In fact, when I spoke before the transportation, when it was coming out of committee, she was there, and she spoke very highly that's, of that's me, great. and she was great. And um, they've they've been phenomenal. There's I will so say they've been great. so many little things that can be done. I, 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 I know... I'm in New York State occasionally, and I'll see uh, signs there. Uh, it'll be a rest stop. It'll say tech, tech stop. stop. Right. Yep. So and that's what I hope to get in Pennsylvania. Connecticut the same way. Yes. Connecticut. Well, and oh, and, and yeah. Representative Rosemary Brown has actually put right in the legislation that all our neighboring states actually have the bill. So it's kind of us for time for us to step up. New York, You're New right. Jersey, Maryland, all our connecting states. So when they come in from the gap, you know, right there, yeah. and that's where Paul got killed. You know, they all can pick up their phone as soon as they cross over and pick up their phone and use it. Pennsylvania is a tough state, mainly because it's big. You know, it's yes. 60, 67 counties in the yes, state it of is. Pennsylvania. Yes. And it takes a lot to get legislation through. And I'm, not because I'm a state employee, but Pennsylvania is one of the last to go real ID. Yeah. The last. Yeah. It's it's a very it's a very complex political machine because of its size. Maybe. Yeah. And that's one of the reasons, unfortunately. Yeah. And it's kind of, it's kind of um, hard for me because I'm there saying you know could we have all this funding for ALS and they'll be like sure you can have it you know here it is and then I'll be like now can you just get the phone out of their hand and they'll be like eh that's a really kind of complex it thing is. and I'm like very yeah complex. you know yeah. and I'm like how can it be complex we're Ever, trying to yeah, save lives all I want to do is save lives and Ever it's, since I first it's so you frustrating on here, I was certain that the next time you came in You'd be saying, well, here's our bill that we got through. It's been the most difficult. I knew, you know, when I was starting out on this, that this, was, you know, it was going to be hard for me. I just didn't think it would be. I knew, legit I knew the justice system was hard fighting my son's case. That was the battle in itself. I knew legislation was going to be tough, but I really honestly didn't think it would be this you know, tough. Politics is tough. Politics just doesn't see things with the immediacy that, you might, right. and that's the part. It's the it's what the am I missing and the on hard, the other the hard side part, of it? What, what yeah, is, that's a good the question. The hard part what are you for me is, you know, two years ago, again, we got hit again by an undistracted driver. I told you that our van. So we got hit twice. So it's not a matter of you know if it's going to happen to you. It's, it's a matter of time of when yeah. it's going to happen, and it's. Unfortunately, I don't want, I'm trying to prevent it. I'm, that's why I'm out there what's, talking. What's the opposition? What's the, what kind of argument can somebody I think make? it's just because everybody's doing it. Everybody's addicted to their phone, quite honestly. Well, I'll tell you I really do. Thing about everybody's New York. addicted. Everywhere you go, you could, right here, you could look out the window well, and you can you, see everybody you know, on their and they phone. They argued the freedom of speech, and I pay for this device, and I have the right to use it. And, and you know, they, they listen to that side of it too, right. arguably. And it's, I got a freedom of speech to use this when I want to, and this is not right. Russia, and you're not going to tell me when I can make a phone well, call. And it, it's, it's, it gets highly convoluted it is. At And that even point. when there is a crash, like in my son's case, he's not even listed in the road crash. He's just a road crash fatality uh, just in a, 2010. Just a statistic, yeah. And when I exactly. got hit two years ago, 
I told the state trooper I saw him on his phone when I looked up in the mirror, and the state trooper said to me, Mrs. Miller, unless he admits it, we cannot just go into his phone. Yeah, I, I, and that is the problem. Right. It's their right, you know, in privacy. It's and all until of our you right. get a subpoena and a search warrant, look at and drug that's dealers where they could solve a case with a murder. They cannot. Go, Yahoo can't go into their email. Google can't right. go into their account. You yeah. can't go into your cell phone. But I with this it. bill, with this bill, the handheld bill, the police will be able to, if you're holding that phone in your hand while it's in motion, the police will be able to pull you over. And they do that and they in will, New York and they, State. You're they right. You bet they and do. that's what they I'm trying to get. They do it in New York State. You're right. Yes, they do. Uh, yep. Yeah, I see people all the time. They'll be like, I got an $800 fine, and I will not touch yeah, that phone. Absolutely. And I'm like, that's when I'm trying to get this, the representatives yeah, I to get I see them in, uh, along 81 in New York State. Uh, and I know when we, when we uh, was still, when I was still on the news beat, uh, you know, we were always told, be careful over there. Of course, it wasn't the, the driver was on the phone. Right. There would be the, be the right. reporter. But I guess you know, you've got to see them physically right. holding the phone. Right. Yeah, it's, right. it's another gray area. You right. Know? But the, with this bill, you know, that's going forward. But like I said, it, you know, I, I want everybody to realize hands-free. And today everybody's like, well, Mrs. Miller, I use my Bluetooth. I'm still trying to tell them that is still distracting. Your brain is still, this is what I tell everybody. When you're at home, watch a TV show, have somebody call you, listen to both conversations, and then when you're done, try in your brain and remember both. You can't won't. do it. You can't no, do it. No. You really cannot do it. And everybody thinks that, you know, it's the safest. They're like, I got my new car and I got all this new technology yeah. in it. And I'm like, it's I, not safe. You, you, yeah, you are getting some uh, public service uh, uh, support on the, the idea. And, and one of the greatest spots I've ever seen is the guy who's driving in his four-wheel drive vehicle hunting for Bigfoot. Oh, that's yeah. great. Well, I well, think everybody has commented how gets, great that's. And yeah, well, that is true. He you gets know, a call what a walks great around. spot. I will, I will tell you, back in 2013, we had a healing retreat in Utah with a bunch of families that lost their loved ones. And I actually met David Strayer, who works for AAA, who is the world-renowned person who does distracted driving. And even then, I didn't realize how serious it was. And we met at... Uh, University of Utah and we actually sat in the simulators and he said you know when all of this talk tech te technology comes out and that it's going to be worse than a level five hurricane and more people are going to die because they think all of this technology is great when they start putting all this infotainment systems in the vehicles and that what he was talking about you know people with the gorilla and all that and he's like people don't see it you know, you, they, people drive by buildings because they're talking on their cell phones when they're driving. And they think it's safer, and they see build. They pass by buildings and bridges and all of that. And that's what he says that you know the gorilla. And people say that now, even when I'm talking to the state representatives, they're like, "Well, we're talking on our phone and we're traveling and we're doing our business." And I'm thinking that's just it until that child runs out in front of that car yeah. and it kills you them. Know, it's funny, and though, then they're going to be in the in the 40s. They fought getting a radio in your car. They fought right. radios in cars because it was distracted. And now in your minivans, the last seven or eight years, you have your DVD monitor right up so right. the driver, <laughs> the right. driver and the passenger can watch a movie with, while you're driving. But they don't realize it's is with incredible. all of that stuff is that your reaction time is delayed sure. you know the stopping distance is delayed that's why people are running stop signs that's why people are running lights because your delayed reaction time it slows your brain down and your reaction time and all that is slower so hence more people pedestrians are getting hit you know you see an increase in all that because people think that everything is safer and it's really not safer no as a matter of fact that's another aspect uh, that this has um, grown into, and, and, and we were, you know, I, 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 I kind of uh, uh, joked about it, but uh, we gave you a call right before you came to the studio. Yeah. You said you were across the street, and I said, well, don't use your phone while you're crossing yes, the street. Yes, I would never do that. <laughs> and and right. that has become a big problem. Yes, it Absolutely. is. Because pedestrians are now glued to the phone when Absolutely. they're walking they're looking down, the street. They're texting. Yes, well, you'll see all the videos. You People think they're funny, but they're not. People walking in water fountains, people right. walking in oh, yeah, holes. Right. Yeah. Because that's what I mean about people being addicted to their phones. You can't go out at a restaurant where you don't see. I just saw this not too long ago. I actually went over and I talked to a dad because his wife and his three children were all on the phone and the dad was sitting there, you know. Yeah. And 
they're not engaged. Everybody's engaged in social media, and there was no talking. You'd like you know, my wife's rule at the table when we're out with the phones grandkids off. and everything. Oh, phones, phones, phones away. Off. Yeah, phones yeah. away. Years ago, people used to communicate and talk. You know, now they text from the other room, you That's know, right. and yeah. they don't yeah. communicate. It yeah. really, cell phones have really, really, really taken a lot away from families. You know, I mean, to me, it literally has changed my life dramatically. Sure. But in yeah. other families, you could see it when you're out. We were out not too long ago. Another one of my friends came in from Utah who lost her daughter, and we were out for dinner, and all the parents were all talking, and the two parents had help, gave their kids the cell phones, and you could see the kids trying to pull on the parents to talk, and they just gave them to socialize. And I'm thinking, you know, those kids were begging for their parents' attention, and all they wanted to do was give the, And we so badly wanted to go over and say, don't do that, yeah. you know, don't do that. I think all technology does that. You know, they did the same thing in the 50s when everybody gathered around the TV set and nobody talked to each other. I think it's just the, it's the latest technology that gets yeah. more away from the American well, home Well, but life, when it comes know? to the to the car, now you're but talking it's really, about danger. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. there, there is other distractions. There's no doubt, you know, reaching, you know, for a drink and, you know, there's eating in your car and all that. But there's no doubt that the cell phone right now is the number one. No doubt killer of all and um, I just want people to realize that you know your loved ones are here they're present in right here with you be with them spend time with them don't let your cell phone take over your life and there's nothing when you're in that vehicle there's nothing 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 that's that important than a human life and I mean I'm the one to tell you that and it's so important for me to get out there right now. You know, prom time's coming up, and I go out with um, with PennDOT. And you know, Paul was killed in a work zone too, so that's why PennDOT. You know, I really, wow. okay. I he was in a work zone. It was a good deterrent with the fines doubled and all the states of. But I mean, that's that's a yeah. little a little too late. Yeah, but, it was an a, an know. active one because no, it was the holiday. Yeah. But you know, I needed to call PennDOT yep. in to say because he was trying to say the uneven pavement had forced him off the road at first, and you know all yeah, of that. Yeah, that but, wasn't true. No. No, it no. wasn't, you know, but, you know, it's just a lot, you know, yeah. and well, last year we came out with, um, you know, Paul was at Lackawanna. We have his uh, memorial scholarship every right. year, which is August 11th of this year. Last year we came out with a, um, through Lackawanna, because we do so much with them, we came out with the distracted driving training module. So the police can learn how to enforce all the cadets coming out and then actual they get credits um, police officers can go back and they actually will gain credits because we really can't wait for legislation you know I don't know how long it's going to take legislation yeah. we're praying it's going to go through this year we're really hopeful where does it stand at the moment right now it's uh, it's before the transportation committee so it's in committee, and so it's in committee. <clears throat> we just went back we just reintroduced it in February in I, the house uh, or it's in same. transportation committee in the house, okay. right? And then now we're going to shoot it out. Well, that's so as far as you can get it before decisions made. Right, so and then we're going to shoot it. Roads. Well, I'm spending a lot of time in Harrisburg right now, going back and forth, and um, I just uh, was down there again, and we got 30 co-sponsors on the bill already, oh, which is good. great. Yeah. So um, that's what I've been doing is going down, meeting with them face to face, and. I think they're kind of sick of seeing this face, but um, that's well, all I can do. The squeaky, the squeaky wheel. Good for you. The Good squeaky for you. wheel gets the grease. Well, huh? every year I keep saying this is going to be our year, but you know, other states are are doing it. Other states are adapting right now. Other states, too, yeah. and if we do, um, this will be the 17th state that yeah. will do it. And so. then the key is going to be the enforcement, like that's those right. New York troopers on yeah. Andy. Yeah, and they will. Got, you, they will. Right. They, they, they they'll, they'll be up. able to enforce it. That this bill is definitely if it's it. They have to mount it. Well, it can't be in their in their hands. And um, like I said, uh, and this won't be the end for me. I'll just continue to make it stronger and stiffer. And um, sure. Well, while we're waiting for the bill, and yes. while we have a couple of minutes left, people are watching, whose kids and whose grandkids are going to be going to that prom. Uh, Ninety-nine and forty-four, one hundred percent of them are going to be having a, a, a smartphone with them when right. they go. What do you want to tell them? Um, just, you know, right now I always say the word pass when um, I give out these red, white, and blue um, bracelets, cause, bracelets. Right, because Paul was killed on the 4th of July, and it says, you know, um, the Paul Miller story, and I tell them all, you know, we want them to arrive alive. So we tell everybody, 94% uh, of crashes, and we use the word crashes because they're preventable, they're from... People um, being on their phones, which is distracted driving, so P for no phone, 
A for no alcohol, anything addictive, S for um, speeding, and the other S is always, always, always wear your seatbelt. If everybody got into their vehicles and did that every single time, they would arrive to their destination <coughs> alive. So it's us choosing bad behavior. It's us, it's us causing yeah. the problem. It's not the faulty ignition in their car. It's not a deer running out in front of them. So I tell everybody that, you know, I give them this band. I tell them to either wrap it around their cell phone or wrap it around their stick shift. And it always reminds them that when they get in their car, that if they passed every time, again, no phone, no alcohol, anything addictive, no speeding. no speeding, and always, always, always wear that seatbelt, they would arrive wherever they needed to go alive, and they would be there safe. So I'm asking everybody to just beware, get into their vehicles, and you know, keep their eyes on the road, their hands on their wheel, and their mind at task, and they would get to their destinations alive. Eileen, thank you so much. Thanks, and Eileen. I can't wait to have you back thank next you. year when you tell us about the new bill that's in yes. place. Yes, House Bill 37. And how it's being enforced. That's yes, right. House Bill 37. And that, that will be great. Uh, I just have to commend you up and down for your tenacity. And, yeah, and stick to it. Well, thank you. Is, uh, yeah. And if anybody's Absolutely. out there and they want to reach out to the representative, tell them it's House Bill 37. It's the hands-free bill by Representative Rosemary Brown. If they could reach out to their local representatives, their state representatives, and tell them they want them to co-sponsor the bill or or at least vote for it, that would be a sure. tremendous that help. That extra push will certainly you know, carry a lot thanks, of weight. Thanks, Eileen. Thanks thank again. You. Rusty, thanks, thanks Dave. You. Thanks, Mark. Mark McGlory, thanks for keeping us in focus. I'm David DeCosmo for ECTV Live. Until we see you again next time, here's hoping all your news is good.